This lesson covers automating some tasks back to directory using command prompt and PowerShell tools. Before I talk about the tools though, I want to cover something called the distinguished name of an object. I've referred to this in the past and you can see here an example of a distinguished name. This is made up of a number of components. So you can see OU equals the name of an organizational unit. So OU means an organizational unit name. DC equals a domain component. So if my domain is called savaltech.net, that's domain component DC equals savaltech, comma DC equals net. So this is going to show me all of the objects that are in the organizational unit Justice League in domain savaltech.net. Now likewise, I can actually point to a specific object using its common name, CN. So if I wanted to say user dick, it would be CN equals Dick, comma, OU equals Justice League, comma, DC equals Savile Tech, comma, DC equals Net. I can see this through AD users of computers when I have that advanced features view turned on. If I look at my user, properties, attribute editor, I can see the distinguished name. So you can see it's at CN equals Dick Grayson, comma, OU equals Justice League, comma, DC equals Savile Tech, comma, DC equals Net. It's important to understand what those distinguished names are because they're used in a number of the utilities. I previously covered manually creating users, computers, groups, etc. But I may want to do a bulk import of many, many users. So one way I might do this is I might have a comma separated value file, a CSV, that I want to just bulk import. A utility called CSVDE allows me to import or export. So for example, I can say a file name and then what I want to export. So I'm actually going to say the root distinguished names. This is where that distinguished name is useful. I'm going to say that organizational unit, Justice League, my domain. So now if I open up that file, I can see all of those objects. Likewise, I could have created a file. Now you wouldn't have all these same attributes. Some of these are things like the GUID, distinguished name, hash values. You don't need to specify all of those. You can control what attributes you actually want to populate from this CSV file, which you manage by setting the header row, which you can see here. I could, for example, take a lot of these out and just pass username, SAM account name, first name, last name. You can't set passwords through this. And then I could use the dash I switch to actually import this. Likewise, I can use the LDIFDE utility, which uses the LDAP interchange format instead. And here we can see it's just a different format. So you have choices on how you can bulk export and then use these same utilities to do the bulk import as well. There are also a number of commands that start with DS. I previously showed one of these commands, the DS query. But likewise, I can use commands such as DS git a particular user. So if I go back to this command, I might say ds git, and I'll say I want to get a specific user, and the common name of that user was that Dick Grayson. He's in that organizational unit and the domain. And I can get that object. I can modify that object with ds mod. Maybe, for example, instead of just grabbing it, I want to say ds mod the user. And maybe I'll set the department to Justice League. So now if I go and look at that user, we can see the department is now Justice League. And I can create users, I can delete them, for example, with DSRM. So lots of capabilities. But really the direction we're shifting today is less about the command prompt because of its limitations and more about using PowerShell. Now there are a huge amount of PowerShell commands. Everything I can do from the GUI, I can do through PowerShell. And I could walk through and show you every single PowerShell commandlet. You could search for them yourself. You could, for example, type in AD, and it's going to start to give you a hint of all the things you can do. But my preferred approach is to use the Active Directory Administrative Center. I can look at a user. Maybe I'm going to disable them. Then I'm going to enable them again. It shows you this Windows PowerShell history. It shows me all of the things I have to do to modify those objects. 
Now you'll actually notice in this case, it's used the set AD object. The reality is for enable and disable, there is actually an easier way. This PowerShell command here is basically searching Active Directory. So it's finding me AD users with this specific filter, which is where the name equals Dick Grayson. But this could search for many, many users. I can then pass this to the disable AD account. So that's now going to disable that user. If I refresh, that account is now disabled. Likewise, I can pass it to the enable AD account. So while the Active Directory Administrative Center is very useful for most things, it's not always going to give you the most friendly answer. If I was going to update attributes and values, it's going to tell me how to do that. Think about creating groups, modifying group membership. I can say within that organizational unit to create a new group. I'll just call it test group. Okay, it's a security group. It's a global group. And I'm not going to set any other options. New AD group, the name and the path. Now, for example, I might open up that group and add a user to it. So I go to the Members tab. I'm going to add, and I might add Dick Grayson. Now it's setting the AD group, and it's adding a member to that. Now, likewise, it's using this syntax. There is a add-ad group member commandlet. So again, there's other options. So take some time. Try the Active Directory Administrative Center. Look at the options available in the PowerShell Integrated Scripting Editor. So for example, here I could actually just search for AD group and it's showing me all the options around group membership. Same for computer membership. If I go to AD computer, it's giving me those options. And remember I can select in here and do show details. It's gonna give me that graphical form to help me work out what I need to set and create that command for me. What's really gonna help you though is being able to operate on these many, many user objects. And it's gonna be this search and it's not just get AD user, there's objects, there's computers, there's different options here. But you will search on the objects you need and then pass them to those various commands. So for example, instead of just searching based on the name, that's a very easy one. But maybe for example, I need people who haven't logged on. So I can actually say last logon date. So if the last logon date is less than a certain time, so maybe I'm gonna say March 3rd, 2013. And I can specify where I want it to search. So maybe I'm going to search at a base, search base, and I'm going to use that distinguished name. So OU Justice League, or maybe this time I'll just say the common name of users, and it's in my domain. Quick typo there, should be less than LT. And now it's telling me all the users that have not logged on since that date I passed in that container, the user's container. And then might decide to actually go and pass that to that disable AD account. So if not logged on for a certain number of days, I'll then go and disable them. So understand the PowerShell commands that are available, understand the various types of searching you can do through the filters and put those things together. This concludes the lesson on automating Active Directory tasks.